Hey guys, today we are going to talk about some cards that have gone up in price and it's very sneaky how expensive these cards are right now. We will start with Ristic Study. This card is in a great need of a reprint. Uh, the foil copy in Commander's Arsenal is $28 and some chains. It's a common and it is considered one of the best EDH cards. The more players there are, the more cards you're going to draw. The fact is people don't pay the one most of the time. So you're drawing a card every single time opponent casts a spell, which if they are a control deck, they're going to cast a lot of spells. Ponder, Brainstorm, Demonic Tutor, Vampiric Tutor, you each get a card for every single spell your opponent cast, giving you such heavy card advantage, such heavy card advantage that it's pretty crazy. Now I would love to see this in a foil, maybe a reprinted version would be great, uh, in Iconic Masters or Magic 25th Anniversary. It's a great, great card from a terrible set. So next we'll talk about Eve Tide. And this one's a crazy card, but I can understand why it is so good. It costs six, it's an artifact. Each opponent who controls more creatures than you cannot play creatures. This is true for artifacts, enchantments, and lands. So you can lock out your opponents, right? You can lock out your opponents by being resource light, which a lot of decks are. As you can see, it spiked from pretty much bulk to the $5 it is today, and has continued to go up steadily, but slowly. It is one of the cards that when you look at your old cards, any type of effect on your opponents, on each opponent, that keyword is very, very important because you get so much advantage in EDH. EDH is the main reason cards are going up in price now. We don't talk about standard card prices very much, and the only reason we talk about modern a lot of times is because they have gone down in price. But EDH has steadily been the format as if you can dodge the reprint, then the card will go up in price. Talking about cards and sets, Saviors. This is a $12 card that when I played it, it was in high school. I remember it was my senior year. Saviors was out and we had a foil copy of this. I think my friend pulled a foil copy of it. It's worth like a few bucks at the time. Remember ED8 wasn't something until much later. It's crazy now that I look at the, when you consider what the prices of these were when they first came out. The foil copy is $46. A great commander, very, very strong, and very fun. And blue is all about fun, right? So when you talk about EDHs, you talk about commanders, you talk about foil cards, what people like is their own style. So the card has to be good, but also has to have style. And copying is always going to be something very attractive in blue, and it's going to attract that particular player's base. I love the card. It is something that I have owned in in the past. I've own, owned a foil copy in the past. I probably traded into something ridiculous that is no longer valuable. But foil legends from old sets, you cannot go wrong. Now, Snapcaster Maids. All right, so let's talk about Snap for a little bit of time. Snap is good. Uh, Snap is very, very good. And one of the reasons he is so good, he gets better in time. He ages well because there will only be more instants. There will only be more sorceries. Therefore, he can only get stronger. Now, the reprint didn't really affect him as much as I believed it would have because they made him a mythic. Same deal with Cavern of Souls. By making these rares into mythics, they offset, they offset the loss of the card or the loss of value. And that's something very interesting to learn because I feel like they could do that in even a core set, right? If they made, you know, Aether Vial a mythic, 
Now, I know some of you think Aether Vile is a mythic from the Vault Exile, blah, blah, blah. I, I just cannot see it. I cannot see it. I think Aether Vile, if it is a mythic, should be in a core set. But it shouldn't be in Iconic Masters or something like that. Anyway, the, the time to buy these, these have started to trend up. And I don't see them falling anytime soon. All right. Funny story. I own many copies of this card this is a card that you got in bulk this is a definition of a card a stronghold bulk and i own mm, i don't know a few dozen copies of it yes this card is now a six dollar card what does it do it pretty much destroys all creatures target player controls for each creature that that is put into your graveyard you can put two goblin tokens which are one ones so it's a really not fair exchange right so you destroy all target players not you you probably wouldn't want to target yourself you destroy all target opponents creatures and they just get double that amount of one ones assuming they don't have tokens beautiful beautiful mechanic something that is just so funny right it's an absolute blowout in EDH, especially in red. So a lot of these cards that we are looking at and that we're talking and discussing or having a discussion about, they were not valuable at one time. Uh, and they, through EDH, have gained value from this new format. Crackdown was a, one of the most awful cards back in the day. Like it just wasn't a card that you wanted to have. I McKinney Mask. I was in seventh grade for McKinney Mask, and I used to love this card and honor the fallen. <laughs> I used to play those two cards, four elves in each type, and play white weenies, and it was just terrible. Uh, it was a terrible time. Well, power level wise in Magic, yes, you have Dark Ritual. Yes, you have brainstorm and you also had i'm trying to remember if lightning bolt was in this i'm guessing not are in this format but yeah dark ritual you had brainstorm both very very iconic cards you had counterspell at two and then you had crackdown crackdown was a lot of fun in emperor i don't know like why no one else played this format but when i was younger in middle school and high school all we did was play emperor and since that time, no one's played that. We read, read like an Inquest magazine. That's how we got all of our magic news back then. It was a magazine, a monthly magazine. We, and it, it told us about this new, exciting pro format called Emperor. And we were like, yeah, we're going to be on the pro tour soon. We're going to be in the Grand Prix. Yeah, nice. GP will all be Emperor. And it never happened, right? <laughs> Lastly, uh, very simple... Anytime it reads double your mana, buy it. Buy lots of it because it's probably very good. At some time, this was a $2, $3, maybe a $4 card. It looks like it was around 10 during RTR. It's a beautiful card in person. It is something that is a $60 foil, a $25 non-foil. It's something that will always have value, will always increase in value unless it's reprinted. There was a tremendous amount of great reprintable cards today. And it's something that I would recommend would be Iconic Masters in 25th anniversary. Just make a list of the most expensive cards and just cross them out one by one and reprint them all. Mana Reflection, really expensive card for what it is, but it is that good. Hopefully it will get a reprint as a non-mythic. I can't see this as a mythic right? Maybe I could. I don't know. Dublin Season, I believe, was a rare when it was reprinted in the Master Series, so I can see this one as a rare as well. Anyway, that is it. Wait, was Dublin Season a rare? I think it was, but if it's a rare, it's a very expensive rare that got a reprint. Doubling Season. Like a super duper expensive one, right? Let's see. Well, yes, it was from, let's see, a picture of it. It was the picture. Yeah, okay, from, looks like Modern Masters 1, it was just a rare. So, obviously, we can have the Mana Reflections as a rare as well. 
anyway that is it bye guys